We could almost consider fragment-free switching as a compromise between cut-through switching and store-and-forward switching. One of the big benefits of cut-through switching was that the switch didn't have to see the entire frame before it started to forward it out towards its destination. However, it didn't check to see if it was valid or not. Maybe a collision had occurred. Maybe the frame check sequence didn't match up. With store and forward switching, we would get the entire frame stored in the switch, make sure it was good, and then start forwarding it. I suppose it's good that we made sure it was a valid frame, but we were introducing some delay by having to receive the entire frame before we started to forward the frame. Fragment-free switching is somewhat of a compromise. Fragment-free switching states that most collisions that are going to occur within a frame are going to occur within the first 64 bytes. What fragment-free switching does, it looks beyond just the destination MAC address and beyond the source MAC and beyond the ether type it will actually look 64 bytes into our frame. And because most collisions occur in the first 64 bytes, if it doesn't see that a collision has occurred in the first 64 bytes, it has some assurance that this is probably an OK frame. We didn't go to the trouble to wait for the frame check sequence to arrive and do a calculation, so we're not being as thorough in our checking as we would with store and forward switching, but at least we have more assurance that the frame is valid as opposed to cut through switching. To sum up, fragment free switching is going to examine the first 64 bytes of a frame. If it does not see that a collision has occurred, it is then going to forward that frame based on the destination MAC address.